The hall is filled to capacity. Healthcare providers, officials of the National Health Insurance Scheme, leaders of organized labor, and representatives of health maintenance organizations. The health and investigative hearing organized by the House Committee on Health Care Services into the compliance rate of health maintenance organizations to the health insurance scheme contributions, the utilization of funds by health care providers, and the inhumane treatment of enrollees. The chairman of the committee gives a background. The National Health Insurance went into operation in 2005, and 12 years later it is yet to cover more than 3% of the population based on available information from the Federal Ministry of Health and National Bureau of Statistics. There is sufficient evidence, therefore, to indicate that the scheme is on the threshold of failure, as it is only serving the interests of others. The Executive Secretary of the Health Insurance Scheme, visibly upset, says health maintenance organizations are largely to blame. Healthcare financing in Nigeria that I met is nothing but a huge fraud. It is nothing but subsidy to HMOs, worse than fuel subsidy. Why is it worse? Fuel subsidy, they cash their checks and leave town. HMOs cash their checks and people suffer and die. How many Nigerians have they covered? What they have done over the years, ladies and gentlemen, is increase the number of NHIs and rollies. They say they have. Excuse me using this word in this house, pardon. They have been partnered with complicity, complicity of NHIS. I come from the land of HMOs, the United States of America, that's why you guys went and copied this. But you went and copied and pasted. If you do not know how to paste, do not copy. <laughs> I am the first executive secretary to go around this country and say, we as the regulators, we've been sleeping on duty for the last 12 years. If we were doing the right thing, we wouldn't be in the mess we are here today. For the spokesman of a group of the health maintenance organizations, the problem is largely that of regulation. The fact remains that out of 59 HMOs, all of them can be bad. Let's face reality. So if there are some that are bad, say it to their face. You don't paint all the HMOs with one brush. It's not done. If there's any reason why we've taken him to court, is the fact that we, we, we have seen, boldly and clearly, the AS, sincerely speaking, it's like he doesn't listen to people or he doesn't take advice. He doesn't know the scheme. I bet to, I, I see this properly. Other agencies and groups also put forward their positions. I hope you begin to look at whether it is mandatory that HMO should exist or not, considering that there are some countries, there are many countries that oppress the scheme without HMOs. Our position is that, well, we don't think HMOs have a role uh, in this scheme if we want to strengthen it. We can do away with them and the scheme can actually go forward. That's our position. Thank you very much. The hearing is to continue on Thursday, after which the committee is expected to come up with recommendations that will address the issues raised here. Lanray Lassese, Channels Television News.